My name is Ofer Shazaf, and I'm an application security expert, and I'm the leader of the OASP Israeli chapter. Uh, today I will talk with you about the security of charge stations, those uh, outlets there in the streets that help you charge your electric cars, at least once you will have them. A charge station is essentially a computer out on the street. It has a main board, it has a communication with a central server, with the internet many times. Uh, it has an RFID card reader that enables you to identify yourself to the charge station and start charging. Uh, as well as electrical components such as a, a, a circuit breaker to protect uh, from electrocution and a meter to measure the amount of electricity um, consumed. Why would uh, you need such a computer on the street uh, because somebody has to pay for the electricity and because you need to make sure that not everybody gets electricity at the same time uh, which would be just too much uh, so we need a computer there however once you have a computer there on the street uh, there are naturally information security aspects and a potential for hacking so how would one go about trying to hack into a, a charge station out there in the street. So first of all, uh, we have physical access. Either they're on the street, uh, just go out, open it, it's usually protected by a simple key, or go out and buy one from the vendor. Uh, they're not cheap, but they're not uh, unattainable. Once you open them, you'll find uh, the components I've described before, such as uh, essentially a, a computer, usually Linux-based. Uh, this physical access enables analysis of uh, the hardware, the CPU, getting access to the firmware, reverse engineering, and in many cases also uh, connecting to the debug port uh, of the processor to actually enable real-time analysis while somebody is charging. Uh, a second element that's usually hackable in a, in, in, in a charge station is the charge station communication upwards. In many cases, to have a large number of charge stations uh, in, in a single uh, parking lot, they would be connected to each other using a serial connection which is very slow and very, very ancient uh, and has very little security in it, uh, such as RS-485. Um, tapping into it, um, getting information about who's charging their identities, their, their um, uh, payment information, uh, and potentially doing a man-in-the-middle attack uh, so you can charge whenever you want uh, is also a potential. The third uh, aspect of a charge station which is uh, hackable would be the RFID card. RFID cards are and can be secure, however uh, in many cases due to cost, after all those are cheap cards that are people lose, need to get more of them, they might be one-time cars that you buy in a kiosk and just use for charging now. Uh, uh, there's a, lo a very uh, high pressure to buy the cheapest one available and cheap uh, RFID cards are known to include either no encryption at all or uh, insufficient encryption uh, protocols. Um, even if they do have sufficient encryption, in many cases they use symmetric key encryption which means the same key is used on all cards and all readers and as we mentioned before uh, the readers on the charge stations are usually accessible enabling hackers to get the key for essentially everything. Uh, fourth and last uh, a key element of large physical networks is maintainability. Uh, it has to be cheap and easy to enable uh, technicians to gather and fix issues. Uh, as a result, uh, there is usually a back door allowing uh, a technician to connect uh, to the charge station and uh, um, get immediate access. In an example um, that I found in the maintenance manual on the web of a large vendor of charge stations, what you have to do is just use a key to open the, uh, the charge station, I mean a physical key. And beyond that, there is no security. You just have to move a deep switch into uh, uh, maintenance mode, connect to an Ethernet port using your laptop, fire up the browser, and go to 192.168.2.2, and you're in. I didn't miss the password part. There was no password part. Uh, I wonder if you have a notebook connected to an Ethernet port on a machine running Linux, if a port scan would not get you more than that. 
that's sort of uh, something you can try at home yourself. Those are the vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities are not important by themselves. The question is what a hacker can do, what is the actual risk. So there are some, uh, not trivial, but common risks such as identity theft, so collecting information while people uh, uh, charging, uh, or uh, financial theft, uh, just charging for free or charging on somebody else's uh, account. Uh, those are not insignificant, but they are common. I think that the two specific uh, risks uh, with regard to charge stations and charge networks in general are first denial of service, and when I say service I mean denial of charge service. Uh, a, a hacker can, for example, uh, take out the entire parking lot, making all the electric cars in a company uh, unoperable, unoperating, which is, of course, uh, uh, can harm business if nobody can get out an entire day. But that's on a very local dimension. If a hacker finds a way to change the firmware for a large number of charge stations, it can actually shut down traffic in an entire city or region. This, of course, assumes that uh, there's a large number of electric vehicles used, and we'll get to that a bit later. The second uh, risk involved in uh, charge stations is the physical risk of getting electrocuted. Uh, usually, the design of charge stations and electrical parts in general uh, is much more conservative. conservative and there is a good chance that this part of the system is insulated from the uh, remote management or from the local maintenance uh, capabilities. Now, we often hear about um, different types of physical attacks. As the more we get uh, to the Internet age, we have more and more Internet of Things devices connected to each other instead of people connected to devices or servers. And it always seems that those devices are much easier to hack than websites. And the question is, why aren't they hacked? Why is it not a common, I mean, why don't we see cars uh, crashing in the streets because of a hack or charge stations uh, being full or planes crashing, etc. And I think that one of the key issues is that it sounds simple, it's not that simple. I worked for three years in a company doing uh, infrastructure for charging electric cars. So I knew where to look when I was looking for vulnerabilities. But you need someone who's a hacking expert and also a, a subject matter expert in order to actually do something, and which limits significantly the number of people who know how to do it. The other part is that it's more complex than it sounds. For example, I mentioned that encryption is a key challenge of securing um, charge, charge infrastructure. However, uh, encryption is, is a tough subject and there are not a lot of people who actually know how to break encryption or even encryption implementations. So that's one part of things. The other part is, is actually even more interesting. I think that people tend to hack physical systems much less. We, we sort of, our evolution brought us to a place in which we are careful when it gets to actual physical damage. It frightens us. If somebody is getting injured, it's in the papers. Uh, but we don't feel the same way about virtual hacking. That's why virtual hacking seems to be easy. Just think about yourself. I mean, trying out uh, hacking into a bank, it's, it's nice. It's, 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 it's an exercise. Trying to hack into a car is frightening. And I guess that while naturally criminals, nation states, will use those techniques, a lot less regular people, even people doing it for just for money, will go and hack harder devices such as charge stations. I hope you've learned something. Thank you very much. Uh, you can read more about my thoughts around application security in my blog at http uh, colon slash www.xiom.com. Thank you very much.